I am so excited for this video, y'all. Oh my gosh, I like can't read. I'm like really depressed now. I need to figure out if I'm gonna even continue this book. Five stars for the romance. I'm not kidding. It is October 1st. And do you know what that means? That means we have three new book releases happening today. We have Air. It's a YA fantasy. I forgot the author's name. We have The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. She is the author of the Housemaid series and I just love Frida McFadden's writing. And then we have <laughs> Nothing Like the Movies by Lynn Painter, y'all. It is the sequel to Better Than the Movies, one of my favorite romances of all time. This book got me into reading. Like I cannot explain to you guys how much I love these characters, I love this world, I love Lynn Painter's writing. Like it's just so good y'all. I have such a soft spot in my heart for these characters, Wes and Liz, and for the author Lynn Painter. Like y'all, y'all. So yeah. The sequel's coming out today. I'm so excited. I'm going to do a Barnes trip. I'm gonna get my hands on these three new releases. So yeah, I just thought that I would document the best day ever. for this video y'all because it is reading new releases as you guys saw I went to Barnes and I got all the new releases nothing like the movies oh my gosh y'all I am gonna read this one first I already know I'm just so excited like I cannot we got air YA fantasy Frida McFadden the thriller queen herself the boyfriend and I didn't get this one at Barnes I've actually had this one the night we lost him by Laura Dave but I am probably going to read this one in the video as well because this is a new release it just came out I can already tell you like I said, I'm starting off with nothing like the movies. Oh my gosh. I'm like kind of nervous, but I'm also so excited to get into this. I'm nervous because I don't want to be disappointed. Just the first one was so perfect. Like I don't want to ruin anything. I don't want to ruin the story in any way. So I'm just kind of scared. And I just love the cover. It's just giving October. I don't know. I'm so excited. It's just all the fall vibes are here. I'm going to change, make a coffee, get cozy, and start reading this book. And we shall see. I'm so scared, but I'm also so excited. I'm like giddy. Okay, let me get cozy. Oh my gosh, look. Stunning. Oh my gosh, the detail. Oh, so cute. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Y'all, this is living. Coffee. Anticipated book release. Cute bookmark. Oh, I love it. so much I just love them they're my favorite oh oh. y'all I'm so like giddy I can't even read like it's like a struggle I'm having to like really focus on the words this makes me want to read the first book I always forget how much I love Lynn Painter's writing and until I'm like in one of her books oh my gosh I like can't read oh but I just want to read so bad this is this is hard It is the next day. I got to page 154, uh, but I'm not halfway because this book is a little bit longer than I realized. It's like 430 pages, which is fine because I just love this world so much. Like, I don't care. I will stay in it. I wanted to talk about what this book is about and my first impressions, but I'm gonna be vague because I don't know how many of you guys have read the first book better than the movies. So in this series, we are following the relationship between 
childhood neighbors Wes and Liz. So in the first book, the story is told from Liz's perspective. They're in high school and Liz has a crush on this popular guy. Anyway, she enlists the help of Wes to get with that guy. And I, I think they fake date and in exchange, like Wes will get this parking spot that they fight over, that they have been fighting over. I believe that's how it goes. It's been so long since I read this book. So I'm a little fuzzy on the details. It's fake dating. It's childhood friends to lovers. It's the boy next door. But at the beginning of each chapter, there will be a quote from a famous rom-com film. So like in this chapter, it's 500 Days of Summer. Very, very YA, just cute scenes. Um, I just fell in love with Lynn Painter's writing style. Like it's just so sweet. She has the best dialogue. She comes up with the most fun scenarios. Once you pick one of her books, they're just so hard to put down because it's very fast paced and she knows how to keep you interested. That's what the first book is about. So if you haven't read it, just go read it now. I promise, like it is the best book ever. I rated this book five stars. Now we have this book and like I said, they're in college and so they are just both kind of navigating like their relationship and college. This book, we are getting Wes's perspective, which is very different. I feel like we get more from him than we do from Liz. So it's different. I wasn't expecting that, but I don't hate it. Like I actually am really enjoying it. Obviously like you can guess how this book ends. It's a romance book. So it has a happily ever after like Wes and Liz get together. So what I can say about this book is this book takes place two years after this book. In this book, Wes's father died. His world kind of just fell apart. Things kind of went south with his baseball career with college and his relationship with Liz. I feel like this is very much Wes's book. I mean, that's the feeling I'm getting so far 150 pages in because we're just getting more from him and it's all about him just like going back to school, regaining his baseball career and trying to like win Liz's heart again. I like that it feels different than the first book and I think our move for Lynn Painter was implementing Wes's point of view, making this more about him. All I can say right now is that I am loving this book and I just, I think I mentioned this earlier when I was reading, but I'm just reminded how much I love Lynn Painter's writing. I just love being in her world. I love that she kept the rom-com movie quotes at the beginning of each chapter. I just love that she's staying true to these characters and true to the vibe of this world. And I love Lynn Painter. I love her. I got my book wet. Oh my gosh, I got it wet there too. I love it, but I'm kind of confused why there's like a hundred pages left because I feel like I'm kind of at the part where things are wrapping up, you know, the final act, but I mean, I'm here for it. this the playlist at the end there's always a playlist i'm not okay <laughs> i know i want to cry that was so good i'm like really depressed now like i feel sad like i actually am upset why do i love them so much now i want to read the first one i can't believe it's over it's sad too because this was one of my most anticipated book releases of the year. So I was like waiting for this one. It's like you were looking forward to this release for so long, all that anticipation, and then it's just over, you know? It's like a bittersweet moment. I'm sad, but I'm also happy. I don't know how I'm feeling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, 
it is review time. I am stuck between a 4.25 and a 4.5. I don't know if you care for specifics, but that is what I'm sitting on. I was so excited to read this book, but I was also really scared because I just did not know what Lynn Painter was going to do, and I didn't want her to ruin Wes and Liz's story in any way, and I didn't know if my Wes and Liz loving heart could take any sort of conflict when it came to them. I am happy to say that this was not a disappointment. This was a great sequel. Finished it yesterday and it's still on my mind. I don't want to go too much into detail because I feel like you should just read this with very little information, especially because this is a sequel. So I always feel kind of weird reviewing sequels. This is Liz's book and this is Wes's book, 100%. Lynn Painter hit me with all the feels, y'all. I was on a roller coaster. I forgot like how Lynn Painter like really gets me in to my feels. Like she knows how to make these like cheesy one-liners work. Like I said before, dual point of view was definitely the power move uh, because I feel like both sides of the story are definitely needed for this one. And it was a very nice change from the first book. I don't know, I think it helped make this book stand out in its own way and not feel like a duplicate of this one. In this one, they were in college, whereas in the first one, they're in high school. So they feel a little bit more grown up. And so Lynn Painter did really, well at making them feel a little bit different whilst also keeping the heart of the character so that it didn't feel too new and so that it felt like we were back with our faves, you know? I will say that the conflict in this one could have definitely been solved if they would have just sat down, had a conversation, and cleared the air. But that's usually the case with romances, especially YA romances, so I wasn't mad about it. Like I said before, this book does touch on grief as did the first one. I like that even though in this first book, Liz went through the aftermath of losing her mom, her journey didn't feel the same as Wes's did with him losing his dad. Okay, I really liked the side characters in this one. Like they were actually really interesting. And I only point that out because one thing I will say about Lynn Painter's YA romances is her side characters never do anything for me. They make for fun dialogue. But other than that, I'm kind of just like, eh, I forget about them. But in this one, like I actually loved them. Like I want to read a whole book about them. Clark and Sarah, if you know, you know. And then Campbell and was it Woody? I forgot his name, but if you know, you know. And I would just love a book on those relationships. Like, can we just keep this story going? Like, <laughs> can we stay in this world, Lynn? Because I would totally read it. And I also did see that we got a little snippet of the characters from Betting on You and Lynn Painter's other YA romance. These are like in the same world, but we got to read a little bit of them. What are their names? Charlie and Bailey. Charlie and Bailey aren't Wes and Liz. They're just, it's, you know, Wes and Liz are just on a whole nother level, but it was still fun to see them and just kind of like get a glimpse of what's going on with them. So that was really cute. And I just wanted to point that out because I saw it, Lynn Paint. One thing I do want to say is I don't think this is necessarily a must read. If you were not crazy about the first one, if this didn't like do it for you in any way, I don't think you're going to like this one because this second one is, first of all, it's kind of long. It's like 430 pages. And so the story does feel a little bit drawn out. Like I don't think it needed to be this long, but I personally didn't mind just because I love being with these characters. I love being in this world and Lynn Painter just knows how to keep her stories entertaining. But yeah, if I'm honest, it was a little drawn out. It's a very, very, very slow burn. Like, oh my gosh. I mean, the payoff is worth it. It always is with Lynn Painter, but it's a very slow burn. So I feel like if you are not crazy about Wes and Liz. I'm not gonna like really like this one. You might be a little bit bored. This book is for the Wes and Liz stands, 100%. I feel like this one was just a, a great portrayal of what happens after the happily ever after. Think about your favorite romances. Like if there was a second book, I feel like Lynn Painter did great at illustrating like what that looks like, what a real young relationship looks like, whilst also keeping the roots of just a sweet, corny, cheesy YA rom-com, you know, with the grand gestures and the cutest one-liners. I was so sad when it was over. I could have stayed in this world for forever. So just keep all that in mind that I am a little biased for many, many, many reasons that I have laid out for you. So I don't know if I'm the person to listen to <laughs> when it comes to this book. Yeah, I'm just a little depressed now because I'm done with this book. Like it was just over too fast, but it was so much fun. And yes, I recommend, but keep in mind everything that I said. It was so much fun being back with my fave. Yeah, I think this one was a 4.5 for me because it was just, it was what I needed. I'll find a way to let you know in this video if it does change, but I'm thinking 4.5. And the next book I'm going to read is Frida McFadden's The Boyfriend 
boyfriend. I started it last night, but I only got to page 34 and then I fell asleep. This is a thriller. I believe this is all based on the world of online dating. So I love me some Frida McFadden. Book number two. So I made progress with the boyfriend. I got to page 202. So our main character is Sydney and she is a single woman that lives in New York. She is just having terrible luck with dating. She's on this online dating app called, it's a weird name, Cinch. It's a dating app for New Yorkers. Like the only way to register on this app, you have to put in a New York zip code. Anyways, so she is just going on a string of bad dates with this app, I mean the opening scene, she is on a date and it just goes terribly. And so she is just starting to lose hope. That is until she meets Tom. Tom is a doctor and he just is Mr. Perfect, right? And she is just head over heels swooning over Tom until she discovers that there is a serial killer in New York that is murdering women after he dates them for a short period of time. I can't really say much, but according to the blurb on the back of the book, Sydney starts to get suspicious of Tom because he just seems too perfect. She's worried she's going to be the killer's next victim. So it's told in past and present timeline. In the present, we get Sydney's perspective, but we also get Tom's perspective in the past. All I'm gonna say about that is he is in high school and we are learning a little bit about his home life. The first girl he ever fell in love with, his high school sweetheart named Daisy. I haven't read a lot of Frida McFadden. I've only read her Housemaid series. That is a trilogy and I love that series. I think it is one of the best thriller series I've ever read. Long story short, Frida McFadden just left a great first impression for me because with her writing, it's always so easy to digest fast paced, very entertaining. I feel like once you pick up one of her books, you just can't put them down. I find that Freedom McFadden just has a formula for thrillers and it works. I don't know how she does it, but they're just so entertaining. And she kind of scares me because the fact that she can come up with all this stuff, I'm like, how? So far, I'm very entertained. It's very fast paced. I'm gonna read some more right now. I'm really hoping I'm gonna finish it today. I probably will. I just wanna know how this is gonna end. Well, one thing I will say is if you are reading this book, like the actual book, the actual paperback, don't skim the last few pages. Like don't even glance at the last couple pages to see the page count or anything because there is a spoiler in the way it is written. It will catch your eye and it'll definitely like spoil everything. So just don't even, I'll tell you right now, there's 359 pages. You don't need to go and look. Yeah, I don't know how I feel. I feel weird. 
Mm. All right, let's talk Frida McFadden's The Boyfriend. So one thing I want to say is that Frida McFadden's writing is always so sharp and concise and it truly is perfect for the thriller genre and that is why i keep picking up her books and will continue to pick up her books so all in all like despite my rating and what i'm about to say frida mcfadden did not miss at least when it comes to the writing so with this one mcfadden built this atmosphere of suspense right from the first chapter that immediately had me hooked so once you start this book i don't think you'll be able to put it down i find that she has a way of using simple short punchy sentences that always keep me engaged in flipping the pages. This one is very fast paced with each chapter revealing new information about the characters that definitely propels the story forward. And I love how she uses her dialogue to build the suspension between her characters and definitely add to the tone of the book. It just makes it so much more chilling. Always has me on the edge of my seat. This story did keep me guessing, truly, from the first page to the last. I think I read this book in a total of like four-ish hours. So it was true escapism for that time. The characters in this one are great. I mean, they're well-developed, well-drawn out, and I find that is also a norm when it comes to Freedom McFadden. It works. I mean, are they a little stupid? Yes. That's the only way thrillers work. Can't even be a hater, really. I mean, it is what it is they make the story good right because they make all these terrible decisions <laughs> all in all like this truly was a solid thriller but i have some issues unfortunately even though the twist got me i still was a little disappointed it still was a bit of a letdown i don't know i closed the book feeling unsatisfied and just wanting more i felt like the resolution was kind of rushed and it left certain plot points unanswered it's hard for me to talk about it because i don't want to spoil the twist in any way a part of me feels like it didn't really fit with everything that had been building up the story so it was a little weird it threw me off a bit but i don't know but either way i think i was a little bit disappointed when I closed the book so I think I'm gonna rate this three stars. This was a gripping mindless thriller that kept me entertained very fast paced I couldn't flip the pages quick enough if you want a book that'll make you forget about all your problems for a little bit then yeah read this book don't not recommend this but I don't think it's going to be anything mind-blowing I truly think this is just a solid three-star read it's not a waste of time and I still enjoyed it and I'm glad I read it I will keep picking up books by this author the next book I am reading is air why a fan fantasy. I am on the hunt for a great solid fantasy. I feel like I haven't read one in a while. So I'm really excited for this one. I haven't read anything by this author. Oh my gosh. Not only is the jacket stunning, but look. See, big books like this though, I wish I had a Kindle. Reading this in bed is going to be uncomfortable. You know what I mean. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start reading. I'm in a pickle. This book is part of a duology. It's the first book, but it is connected to this author's previous series, The Embers of Something. I think it's called The Embers of Light. There's four books in that series and I have not read it. So it's in the same universe and I did not know this, but it is said that you can, well, based off of Google, apparently I can read this book as a standalone. Like I don't need to read The Ember series but since this is set 20 years after that series took place, there is going to be spoilers for that series if I read this book. So if I ever want to read that series, like things are going to be spoiled, spoiled for me. And apparently like I will understand the world a bit more, obviously, because it's in the same universe. So, so I don't know what I want to do. I really don't. I'm on page 197, so I've already read a good amount. I need to figure out if I'm gonna even continue this book. Okay, I'm gonna finish the book. 
I'm hooked. I'm already invested. I have to see it through. I don't see the point of not finishing it when I don't see myself reading an Ember of Ash series in completion anytime soon. Plus, I read an interview with the author and she said, you can read this as standalone, so that made me feel a little bit better. The whole plot of this book is very complicated. There's so many details to it. So where honestly, I feel like I could sit here and talk to you guys about it for 15 minutes. But for the sake of time, I'm gonna keep it very brief. And plus, I feel like what's written on the jacket is very vague because of that. There's just so much because y'all the first 200 pages is world building. So we follow three characters in this book and we get their point of view. It's alternating chapters. We get Aiz, Searsha, and Quill. And also y'all, as I'm talking about this, I am aware that I am probably pronouncing some of these names, places, titles incorrectly. You don't need to comment and let me know. So we first meet Aiz. She is an orphan in an impoverished nation of Kagar, and she is seeking revenge against Tyrrell, and he is an air squadron commander. He's pretty much this privileged brat who is in power and likes to be cruel to those he deems are lower class. Anyways, because of him, people in this nation are starving. People in this nation are suffering. Aiz wants to put an end to his tyranny. And it also is a little bit personal because he burned down her orphanage, and the only survivors were her and her best friend Sarah and so Aiz is guided by this voice claiming to be Kigar's mother Div and mother Div was this nation's first queen so we open up the book with Aiz getting ready to act out her revenge on Tyrrell but she fails and is then thrown into prison for her failed assassination attempt and then embarks on this journey to free Mother Div, and there's a lot that goes into that. There's this whole prophecy, but pretty much Aiz believes, and is also kind of coaxed by this voice in her head, that if she frees Mother Div, it'll then bring an end to Tyrrell's reign, and the nation's suffering. We then meet Quill. He is a crown prince of the Martial Empire, and he loathes the thought of becoming king. His aunt is currently in power, and he is just dreading the day he is going to have to take over. One night, the Martial Empire is attacked by the Kagari. They are the people from the Kagar Nation. That is where Aiz is from. And Quill is forced to flee his land. And not only is he running for safety, but his aunt also sends him out on a mission to find another character. His name is Tass. And he must retrieve some item that Tass has been on the hunt for that is going to save the Martial Empire from the Kagari. And we don't know what that is yet. And not only that, but the Martial Empire is being tormented by this vicious killer that is murdering a bunch of innocent children. So it's actually really sad. In the midst of Quill fleeing his land, he runs into Searsha. That is our third character that we follow. And Searsha is labeled as this Jaduna tracker. The Jaduna is like clan, this tribe, and they all have like magical abilities. I'm honestly still learning for myself what the Jaduna people are all about. But pretty much Searsha, she has magic to where she can pull from the earth, whether it be wind, air, water, and use that to track any various entity. And so Searsha is known for being a very skilled tracker. Well, she is banished from her land, from her people, and I don't know all the details with that. I'm still learning. From what I've gathered, she is banished because of something that she did to her own people. I guess she hurt her own people in some way. I don't really know. We meet her when she's in trouble, but then she is saved by this character named Elias, and I believe he's one of the main characters in Ember of Ash series. He hires her to hunt this killer, the killer that is murdering various innocent children in the Martial Empire because he has been personally affected. His son was murdered by this killer. Searsha agrees because the money is too great to pass. The thing with Searsha, because of her magic and how she uses the earth to track, when she makes an oath, when she agrees to some sort of hunt, she cannot forsake the mission. And if she does, her magic will drive her to insanity. She agrees and there's no turning back. While she's on the hunt for this killer, she runs in to Quill. Yeah. So as you can see, it's a lot. It's a lot because these characters feel like they could each lead this book. And so there's a lot going on which with each of their storylines. I feel like I'm just now getting into the story and I'm on page 250. There was so much world building in the beginning, like I said. So many characters, so much politics, like 
It was honestly a little bit confusing in the beginning. I didn't know how I felt for the longest time and I'm sure it would have been easier if I read an Ember of Ash series because I would have known some of these characters that are mentioned, they would have been linked to these characters so it all would have been a little bit easier to digest. I'm aware. But I feel like I'm finally understanding the story. That's why I feel comfortable enough to talk about the plot. And I feel like I'm finally gaining some sort of footing. I'm really loving these characters. There really is so much depth to them. They're all on their own journey. They're all like facing some sort, of, some sort of battle, some sort of grief, some sort of anger, something that has happened in their past. So I'm very interested to see how it's all gonna come together. I do find that Quill and Searsha's chapters are a bit more interesting for me. Um, Aiza's chapters do feel a little bit more slow. I'm like really excited to read more. Like y'all, I'm invested. I'm sold. So yeah, I'm really loving this. Wait. Wait a minute. Well, the author actually got me. I think I have like my new favorite fantasy couple. Oh my gosh, this is so good. They have the sweetest moments. Oh my gosh. Am I gonna cry? I'm scared. I'm actually scared of how this book is going to end. I expect nothing less, but that ending, oh, that hurts. That physically hurts. Oh gosh, and I have to wait who knows how long, probably like a year if I'm lucky. Wow, this was good. I have no words right now. Okay, so a lot to say, but also like I don't even know where to start. So much went down in this book. I'm undecided. I am between a 3.75 and a four star. Either way, I'm going to put in four stars on Goodreads. All in all, like let me just say, I enjoyed this bad boy. I am honestly sad it's over. This book is like nothing I've ever read. This definitely stands out when I compare it to every fantasy book and I've read quite a few. That is already like why I wanna boost up my rating to a four star. I do think this can be read as a standalone. I don't feel like my enjoyment or experience of this read was lessened in any way. I'm sure that if you read an Ember of Ash series that your understanding of this world will be enhanced. That's a given. But I do think that if you don't wanna read that quartet and you just want to dive into this book, I think you can because I was able to understand everything and I feel like the author does great at summarizing key events in each perspective. And in my opinion, it was easy to grasp on the story as a whole. My advice is you do you boo, whatever you wanna do. Okay, first let me say that yes, this book is 200 pages of buildup for the best 280 pages ever. It is worth it. Honestly, y'all, the first 200 pages, I was struggling to get a footing into the story. It was very slow, very overwhelming because, oh my gosh, there were so many characters that were being introduced to me in every single perspective because we switched through three narratives. It was a bit confusing at first, but no, things took a turn and it got so good. And once once it got good, oh my gosh, I could not put the book down. And then when I did put it down, I was itching to get my fingers on it. And as you dive deeper into the story, you realize that those first 200 pages, despite them being a little bit boring and a little bit slow, it is worth it. Every piece of information that you learn is crucial and it only makes the experience 
of the last 280 pages so much better. Another thing I want to point out is that this author is a great storyteller. Oh my gosh, the way everything came together. There are a few unexpected twists and reveals along the way that I think will keep you on the edge of your seat and keep you flipping the pages, especially in those last 280 pages. Like everything happens so fast, it becomes high stakes and action packed. And there are also some emotional moments that'll actually make you feel something. So it's got everything you want when you pick up a fantasy. I'm gonna talk briefly about these characters. So there's Aiz, her, chapters were, yeah, they were rough. Um, just when you compare them to the other two characters, like hers just fell a little bit flat. It all comes together and it all makes sense in the end. And I truly feel like getting her perspective on things was very unique on the author's part. Like I feel like that kind of character arc is not done often, let alone ever. And so I really like how the author kind of did her own spin on this kind of story with this character and getting her point of view. And then Searsha, oh my gosh, that girl is my queen. Like she is a baddie. I fell in love with her right away. She actually is what carried the book for me in the first 200 pages. She truly is such a sassy character with a big heart. Like I feel like anybody who reads about her is gonna fall in love with her. And then we have Quill. Oh my gosh. He was so interesting. He is like no other MMC I've ever read about in a fantasy. And I loved it. It was very refreshing because I feel like a lot of MMCs can kind of fall into the same box when it comes to fantasy male leads. He is one of the softest men I've ever read in fantasy. Oh my gosh, like the way he cares and just some of the things that he would say, like, I'm just like, who are you? He had me feeling some things I've never felt when I read about a male lead in a fantasy. But his story is very interesting. His journey is interesting. I haven't felt this way about a man in a fantasy in a long, long time. Like I think since I read the Throne of Glass series. Okay, now let's talk about the romance. I'm not gonna talk about it too much because I don't want to annoy you, but it had me swooning. Oh, this romance was so good. And it truly was because I love Saoirse so much because she was such a queen. And then Quill felt so different than any other male lead. So you bring that together and what do you get? Um, One of the best romances I've read in a really long time in a fantasy book. Their dialogue was so good and just scenes with them together was so good. Their interactions, their, their rapport, their dynamic. But oh my gosh, y'all, this romance was so realistic. It felt so real. I feel like romances and fantasies, like sometimes they can be a little bit corny, but this one wasn't cheesy at all. Honestly, this is the only romance I've ever read in a fantasy that didn't feel a little bit cheesy, that didn't feel a little bit unrealistic. Like this is real to me. Five stars for the romance. I'm not kidding. So the only reason I'm not giving this a high rating because obviously I'm raving about the book and so it's like, why am I not giving this like a 4.5, a five star? Is because the beginning was a bit confusing and overwhelming. That does kind of take away from the experience a little bit. I don't know if that is because I did not read an Ember of Ash series. That could be the case. We'll never know unless I read an Ember of Ash series. But I'll all I can do is judge it based off of my experience. And I feel like the big, big, big reveal was a bit predictable, like a little bit obvious. Didn't have me floored like I would have liked to be. But you know, overall, I recommend this book. The storytelling, magnificent. And the way like, all these characters and their journeys like come together in the end was done so well. This was an experience, y'all. Like I was transported. This was so much fun. This is true escapism. Great, great, great characters that have so much depth. Let me just say too, I think this will speak volume. I had no interest in reading an Ember of Ash series, but after finishing this book, I want to read an Ember of Ash series. That's how great of a storyteller this author is. So I feel like that should say something. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there are some side characters in this book that are amazing. Oh my gosh, the side characters actually add. They're all so good, like, and they're so crucial to the story, like every single one of them. Oh my gosh, I just, it's, it's the details, y'all. It's the details. There's, I could go on and on and on about this book. The next book I am reading, The Night We Lost Him. Wait, what is it called? Yeah, The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. I've only read one other book by this author, and it is the last thing he told me. I was not crazy about that book. I know that it is very hyped up. It is a fan favorite, but I just feel like the story didn't really do anything for me. I'm reading this book because the premise actually sounds kind of cool. From what I do know, it is about two siblings investigating the death of their father. And I like that it's siblings. I feel like that's not done a lot when it comes to books in general, but especially the thriller genre. And I wanna give this author another shot. Yeah, this is classified as a thriller. The cover's kinda cute, isn't she? It's kinda pretty. I'm gonna make coffee, start reading. We'll see, but this is book number four.
So I started the night we lost him. I got to pay 139. It's not really giving thriller. Okay, it's got like mystery to it, but I kind of feel it's very character driven. Like I feel like if you don't like our two characters leading the story, you probably would not like this book and it would probably drag because not much is happening. So our main character is Nora. So Nora is still like processing the death of her mother when her father dies. Her father fell from the edge of his cliffside property accidentally. So that's how the story begins, okay? And then Nora's estranged half-brother shows up out of the blue with a bunch of theories on what really happened to their father. Her half-brother, what's his name? Sam, believes that there was foul play involved. He begs Nora to come with him to their father's property where he died to talk to the detective that's leading the investigation, listen in on everything, and pretty much confirm his own theories that things just aren't adding up. Nora goes with him. She then also becomes convinced that something isn't right here. Nora explains to us as the reader that their father knew this property inside and out. Like there's no way he would have just accidentally fallen off the cliff. Sam and Nora are just digging up. They're following all these trails talking to all these people that were close with their father but the more they dig the more they find out that their father was keeping a lot of secrets it's very much rich family drama family secrets with that mystery element of that murder whodunit at the core of this story and i feel like what makes this whole case a bit confusing is the fact that their father was living like multiple lives he was married oh gosh i can't even remember i think three times and he had kids in the those marriages but he kept all the kids separated and so that is why Sam and Nora aren't close some things just don't make sense and so it's hard for me as a reader to even guess what happened here we are also switching to the past it's like 48 years in the past and it's about Nora's father and this woman named Corey and in those chapters he's in college and Corey's like his on again off again girlfriend and so right now it's not making sense but obviously like it's intentional and it's all gonna come together in the end but the story is mostly told from Nora's perspective. We are also kind of following Nora's relationship with her fiance. I mean, her grief with losing both her parents in a short amount of time has driven this wedge between her and her fiance, Jack. And there's also an ex-boyfriend that's kind of coming to the picture. His name's Elliot. It's not your typical fast-paced mystery thriller, but for some reason, and I don't know why. I'm really enjoying it. Really like these characters. I love Nora and I love the brother, Sam. I kind of wish we got his perspective as well. The mystery is interesting. Like I wanna find out what really happened to their father. I'm gonna have to think on it because I really can't put into words what I like about this book. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Wait, okay, so I actually had it all wrong. Oh my gosh, what the heck? <laughs> I was not expecting that. Oh, I love these characters. Wow, why was that actually so good? This was so much better than I thought it was gonna be. Cause I went into this y'all with very low expectations. Interesting. I enjoyed every second of that. That was so good. Let's talk The Night We Lost Him by Laura Dave. This book is kind of weird, so I'm gonna talk through my thoughts so maybe you'll understand why I'm giving this book a higher rating than it probably deserves. <laughs> Let's just talk about it. First of all, I still can't believe that I enjoyed this book so much. Honestly, y'all, I went into this with the most negative energy. I was giving this author another shot. I don't know, I thought she was gonna disappoint. And so because of this book, I'm going to be reading more of this author. I really fell in love with this author's writing. Maybe I need to read the last 
asked and he told me again. Maybe I just read it at the wrong time, but I wasn't obsessed with the author's writing, but now I am, I don't know. I really think I'm gonna read that book again. Here's the thing though. I wouldn't go into this book wanting a thriller. This definitely feels, gosh, I don't even know. I'm not good with genres. More drama rather than thriller. It feels like a love story kind of wrapped up in a mystery. It kind of feels like literary suspense. Like you could even just throw this book into literary fiction because I don't know, it's not very high stakes with a mystery. It's definitely a slow burn mystery. So that's why I feel like you do have to love these characters. Honestly, like if I was going into this book seeking a thriller because it is marketed as a mystery slash thriller, I would probably be very, very, very disappointed and it probably would affect my rating. And so I noticed that there are a lot of lower ratings for this book and I think that's where they come in. Luckily, I went into this not necessarily in the mood for anything. I was just reading it because it was the next book that I had planned to read for this video. So it worked out for me. I think I really liked these characters. I think the author did great at diving into them and they were struggling with certain things and with losing their father and really created some in-depth characters that I was rooting for and I really was reading it for them. I mean, the mystery of Liam's death definitely moves the story forward. I mean, it had me flipping the pages and it's what brings Sam and Nora together, but the heartbeat of this novel is love, both romantic and family. That is something that I feel like this novel explores. I think that was the central theme, and I think it was well crafted in a very delicate way, and I think I was impressed at the way Laura Dave went about it. And this is why I don't want to classify this as mystery and thriller. I didn't find myself trying to solve the mystery, but more went along with this emotional ride of this complicated family. This is a story filled with morally gray characters. You know, no one's really, I feel, a villain, but people who are human and making mistakes, but trying to be loyal to one another. I think I just loved how easy of a read this was. It wasn't anything intense. It wasn't anything high stakes. I drank tea and coffee and got comfy on my couch. And this is where it gets confusing because the way this book made me feel and how much I enjoyed it, I wanna give it a high rating, but ugh, I just can't because I have too many issues with the book. I mentioned earlier that we're switching points of view. You know, we have Nora and she's leading the story, but we would switch to decades in the past where it's Liam, Nora's father, and, and, and this woman named Corey that he fell in love with. I feel like the author was really trying to hype up this love story and it didn't really work for me for a multitude of reasons and I, I can't go into all of them because it would definitely be spoilers. At the end of the day, like it didn't feel really epic. And I think the author wanted this to be this like epic love story that we were rooting for, but it felt just kind of dysfunctional and typical. And I couldn't help but be a little bit annoyed with them because of decisions that they were making and how they were affecting others. And I just couldn't get on board. And so I think that that did affect the way I felt about this book. I think that if I didn't have as many issues with that love story as I did, I would definitely give this book a high rating. And I think the book would have hit on a whole nother level. And then there were a few loose ends. I feel like there were some missing plot points in here. Like the author kind of introduced this idea early on and then it was never brought home in the final act. And I don't know if the author forgot, but all in all, I was left thinking, but what about this? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is like a must read and I don't even know if I'd recommend it because truly I think the reason I love this book so much was because the way it made me feel and I can't guarantee that feeling for anybody else. I think this is like a read at your own risk kind of read. I, I truly think I read this at the perfect time and I enjoyed it. So you know, I'm thinking a 3.75 or a four star. That brings us to the end of this video. That's all the books that I'm reading. My four new releases. Quick recap, we had, oh my gosh. We had nothing like the movies. I think I decided on a 4.5 and then I read Frida McFadden's The Boyfriend and I'm sticking with my three star rating. She was solid, but you know, I haven't thought about it since. I don't know what I said I rated this book. I don't remember. Is it bad that I'm still deciding? I wanna give it a 3.75, but I feel like it deserves a four star because the storytelling magnificent. And then Laura Day, The Night We Lost Him. Four books, all new releases. I actually would recommend every single one of them, which is great. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helped you decide if you should read them or not. Thank you so much if you are here supporting my little channel. I will see you guys next time. Bye y'all. Happy reading.